Hey guys, Leon Basin here, 3D artist based in NYC, and today we're going to get inside the Surface Book 3. So here we have the new Surface Book from Microsoft. This is the RTX 3000 version. This laptop will be replacing my current Razorblade Quadro 5000. So let's take a look at some of the basic features of the laptop. This is like one of the best webcam videos I have seen. Although typing on the keyboard was very smooth and efficient, it was often difficult to see the top function rows on the keys because it's actually color matched to the chassis. This is something Razer does also, but with Razer you have the option to change the RGB colors individually per key. When it comes to the trackpad, I sometimes wish it was a little bit bigger, but it's very precise. Here for instance, the accuracy is almost close to or even better than the mouse in some parts. I really like the look and the feel of the trackpad. With the new Wi-Fi 6 card in this laptop, I'm getting close to Ethernet speeds with this laptop. More on the importance of this later. On the topic of displays, I would say the Razer has a superior quality display compared to the Surface Book. The Razer has an OLED screen which pushes more saturation and deeper blacks. Even with that being the case, I was still able to color calibrate my desktop monitors to my Surface Book laptop. After doing some research, I found out from my previous video that you should not try to detach the screen while the applications are using the GPUs. If you do this, the laptop will freeze and you will have to hard reset it. From a first look perspective, I would say this thing is really light, like one of the lightest things I've held in my hands. The only thing I wish it had was a, a USB-C port here or SD card. For photographers, they can use this as like an external monitor or something like that where you can just pop it in, back up your files in here because it does have a one terabyte SSD. So this would have been really good if it had that. So let's move on to one of the biggest topics, performance. The RTX 3000 GPU handles Call of Duty and Apex Legends both on max settings all while using the native resolution of 3240 by 2160. And it does this while keeping a cool 67 degrees. Now here are some GPU and CPU benchmarks. Something to note is that while running these benchmarks, the CPU reached 100 degrees, and after about four hours of testing, the tablet did shut down to prevent overheating. I would not recommend pushing the CPU at 100% for an extended period of time. Please keep in mind that this much power comes with a little bit of fan noise. Now let's take a look at some real world usage. Do keep in mind right here that the screen capture software is also recorded in the background, but this will play your AK RAW in real time. This is the setup I'm using to edit this video right now. One of the main reasons I got this tablet was to use ZBrush and it's very fluid and excellent. You also need to use a Tablet Pro app to be able to use the shortcuts on the left side of the screen, but it's totally worth it. 
One of the most important programs that I use on a daily basis will be Cinema 4D. And I'm seeing at least twice the improvement over the standard RTX off versus RTX on. Going back to the importance of the Wi-Fi 6 that I mentioned in the beginning, I'm able to have Ethernet speeds over Wi-Fi. This allows me to have my secondary computer render alongside my laptop and I'm getting like blazing speeds. Here you can see the responsiveness of the viewports with RTX on versus RTX off. Here are some potential issues you might run into. I got about one hour of max performance before battery saver kicked in at 30%. But that's still a better outcome than my Razer which starts at an hour during light usage. One thing to keep in mind is that Nvidia hasn't released the updated Quadro drivers. That means from here on out, everything would only get better. In my case, Thunderbolt 3 doesn't matter as it would to most people because instead of the external GPU, I can just use Octane Render's um, net render capabilities to be able to do my main hard drive as a network slave, which is pretty fast considering that this has Wi-Fi 6 and the speeds are like outrageous, very close to Ethernet speeds. I would recommend something like the Razer for someone who is like a super busy freelancer who doesn't really have time at home, has all the ports you need. So someone like that who needs a desktop replacement. The Surface Book on the other hand is more of a companion to someone like me. I have a powerful computer at home and I need to occasionally open some files. It gives me 25% less power than a Razer, but I would still prefer the long battery life, the USB charging over proprietary cable in the Razer. It depends on your needs. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, what you think of it. I'm gonna play some more with this. I'll let you guys know my thoughts pretty the review. Be on the lookout for some more tutorials and stuff. Cinema 4D, After Effects, and that's it. So see you guys later.